All is well. All is well. For the voice, well, the voice you, know who it is. you know who it is. But I am but here I with Ivy, 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 Iron Bush. Iron Bush. I'm about to go I'm on mute and we're going to have a good time here. here. Yes, sir. So, Iron so, Bush, my good brother, brother, you have to flow. Well, greetings to all the beloved across the world. Glad tidings to all. Hope you're doing well. Um, you know, it's always a pleasure when when Brother BC and I get together. And uh not that I have a problem uh, you know, coming on when it's numerous, when it's a panel, but I know a lot of you guys have told me that you you look forward to when it's just uh BC and I. So, you know. Uh, I haven't been on lately. Some of you know that I I did have to take a trip uh, to the East Coast to visit my father. Um, an update on that: he's doing he's doing well. Um, so you know that's that's he's just uh, you know we are highly favored in all situations. So especially in this worldly this matter uh materialistic um delusion verse you know the 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 illusion of this being the real thing that's been separated and i'm gonna touch on that uh, some of that tonight um brother bc and i um being as though um i explained to him like when my flight leaves so um, I'm pretty much going to be up late tonight. And I know Brother BC always, it seems like he always up late night. I, you know, I check him out. I say, man, this brother be just popping up teaching his left and right. So um, I think uh, what what we had agreed upon was we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, we're going to split this into two teachings. And they're both going to coincide with each other. But I want to give this introduction because I feel like right now, the topic at hand that everybody is talking about, I'm sure you already know, is this eclipse that is coming uh, April 8th that is making, a, you know, you've, you've heard it all. You, you've heard that it's making an X on top of United States and uh you know it's uh, I, I've I've heard it's making an Aleph on top of United States um they've taken I think it's 10 red heifers I think uh, now from Texas so I've also heard people saying like you know that that proves that this land is the true land of the hebrews for them to take the red heifers um over to uh the land that we call israel and uh <clears throat> so we're gonna touch into that uh, a little bit tonight and i know bc even when he you know he gives me the mic like this he always chimes in and, and brother i welcome you to chime in anytime but uh welcome to all i don't have my my laptop present so i'm not able to see who is here um only when your comments pop up i may um you know get to see you but i'm usually pretty focused when i'm speaking and then i i go back and i respond to you like on the rewatch but with that being said, we're going to start with uh, some of the secrets of creation from the Kabbalah. Okay, now you might be asking yourself, why is why why do I want to know this? Why is this important? Because these are the people that are one one that are running the world right now. These are your elites. 
These are the ones that are making sure that L eats. Now, if you're not familiar with my teachings, then uh, I will tell you, you, you may get upset at some of the things that I say. Uh, if that happens, then all I do is recommend you go back and, and thoroughly watch some of my older teachings. Um, everything that I have, that I will deliver to you tonight is through the great spirit and through decades of research. And, you know, everything that I say, I can back up with scripture that I've done hours of teaching. So I may not, you know, get into a scripture thing here tonight um, because I've, I've put too much work into where you can go back on the page. If it's a certain subject that you aren't familiar with or you're offended by something or it doesn't match up with what you've been taught, then I just ask that you go back on the page and I'm sure I've covered it. So with that being said, um, the L eats are who are serving L. Now, if you don't know who L is, L going back to ancient times is the, the who we call Saturn, which is uh, an archon, okay? It's also the, uh, the highest of the original seven Elohim, okay? Now I explained this before, where there was one and that was L and he split himself into different it was it was like his children kind of in a way, but he split his energetics body because just like the scripture says, even Satan, even Saturn comes as an angel of light. These archons are lights. They're all light. Now, people, this new age stuff has got everybody mixed up thinking archons are like walking around in the street somewhere and they're like waiting on you to have some kind of stress and they're like sucking up your what they call loose energy or something that's not it though that's the only thing i hear in these streets is low level demons and unless your uh your anointing is so uh glowing your your candle is lit that bright and in that case they're not going to uh send any low anything low level to you so you know um i'm not saying this to brag or boast but the days of you know demons coming my way are long past they they won't they'll observe and they'll really will sit back and try to listen and try to go back and and they have a hierarchy so you know you do have no nomad demons that that are like parasites that walk around by themselves that are not part of the hive mind that are like stragglers um but they're the lowest level they're they're more like looking for somebody who's already wounded like maybe you know like a man who is just giving up who is on the corner who's drinking every night and he's just sitting on the side of the sidewalk and 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 that's pretty he's okay with that being the rest of his life that's like the kind of person a straggler uh a loner nomad demon and it's funny that nomad and daemon are the same word. Now you got to realize when we're talking about the Kabbalah, everyone wants to talk about gematria. For one, no one in this time, and and I, I, I don't like challenging anybody because that's like uh, arrogance and prideful. But um, I'm telling you right now. There's no one out here that is doing gematria in a, in the proper manner. So it's become entertainment. It's, and that's why no one can use it to predict anything because 
they don't even know what real gematria is. Why do you think the powers that be allow it? They got websites up, Gematronator and this and that. They'll even help you. They, there's people, they have agents out here that will help you. These people that go by the name of, you know, truth, truth, truther and truthful and this and that and three, six, nine and, 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 and this and that. These people are basically, they know what they're doing or they're being used ignorantly. But either way, it's the same outcome. So a lot of people are pulled into gematria right now. And gematria, listen to the word. Gematria is geometric language, meaning it was a hidden code that was instilled into the original scrolls that put shapes, geometric shapes into words. It had nothing to do with, with seeing what number numerical value numbers matched up with another numerical phrase that is baby goo goo gaga just a delusion that's strong delusion so if you're and and i didn't even plan on speaking about that so it's, it's the great spirit want, wanted somebody to hear that tonight so that's for somebody uh Really, there's no point in you in, in listening to the people that are teaching this stuff. You, I, every time I turn the, the phone on, somebody's on talking about gematria, and they go down this rabbit hole. By the time you're at the end of the video, you have no clue what they're talking about. They went full circle and didn't tell you anything at all. They really didn't tell you anything except something that already happened, and it's useless. It's use. It's the new form of entertainment. So there's there's two different other things that were used by the Kabbalah more than uh, gematria, and these things are well. First of all, let me uh, let me let me let me get back on track and, and stick to the regularly scheduled program. I don't want to get off talking about gematria and all that. Uh, I'll get back to uh, that'll That'll come into it. But let's start from the beginning. Why, why this matters, why you need, why you should know about the Kabbalah and, and, and the secrets of creation that they know. Okay. The Old Testament, uh, especially the what they call the Pentateuch, contains not only the traditional account of creation of the world and of man, but also uh, within it is is with is locked. It, it, it's it's basically locked in the secrets of the Egyptian initiators. Okay. So your very well, well, maybe not so much your Bible. They're still in there, but they're very vague and it's hard to find. You're gonna at the at the very least, you're gonna have to come across somebody like Brother BC or or I to to get uh, any kind of clarity at at this point in time because the King James version and all that, you're not that's. And, I, and like I said, I, I, some of this might hurt your feelings a little bit, but that's that. All, if you're reading the King James Version, there's some beautiful passages in there that will make you feel good. But you're reading poetry. You read. You are reading 16th century or what is it? 15th century poetry, or uh, or 17. However they do it, 17th century poetry. That's that's what it is. OK, that they and they employed a team. I actually have um, a 200 year old book that has all 300 and some people's names that that rewrote the Bible. It wasn't just a King James one guy. This guy had a team of, of three to four hundred people that rewrote and took it upon themselves to not only change phrases and words, but add, add, subtract, basically do whatever they wanted. So 
the Old Testament, uh, like I said, especially the Pentateuch, contains not only the traditional account of creation of the world and of man, but also locked within the secrets of the Egyptian initiators. Now, uh, and that comes from the being, the, the man we call Moses, okay? In Egypt, his name was Amen, um, Amen Hotep the Fourth, okay, and later uh, was took on the title, not the name of Akhenaten, okay, and started a monotheistic religion that was not sun worship, as many people will tell you, it was not sun worship because. It it was called uh, Atan, okay, or At At Atan, Atan or Atan, Atan, Atan. Okay, it was the belief that there's one, there's one true deity, and that's it. There's nothing else. See, Egypt had all these other. Egypt had the 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 who we call uh, the Beneha Elohim. Because the true Elohim, there's only seven, like I, like I was telling you about the Archons, which is who we call the planets, starting from Saturn down to Mercury. That's the original uh, seven Elohim, and that's, that's all in the alchemy of the, the Hebrew the scrolls, and I've done videos on that if you want to go back and watch. I've broken it down. Um, I mean, this is not beginner level stuff, but it's there and, um, you know, we're, we're here. We're at this moment where it, for whatever reason, you've been called upon to know these things. All right. Not everyone is called to know this level of not uh, of knowledge and it's beginning to connect to the tree of life. So it's not just about the, 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 the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, somebody like myself, I can see how it's starting to connect, okay? And some of us are already connected, all right? It's already, it's already connecting through the mother. And, you know, that's a whole nother video. And, and Brother BC is very good, is skilled at uh articulating that as well now so the original old testament has all the uh secrets of the egyptian initiate initiates uh the mystery schools basically and it came from moses um concerning the genesis the the if you don't know what the egyptian mysteries are it it contained it, it's something the, the the doctrine of something called the God Man, which is yes, baby. I know, baby, but I'm teaching right now. Ronnie, Ron, can you get Naya, please? Excuse me, guys. Um. If you don't know what the Egyptian uh, mysteries are, basically it's about the initiate of the God man, okay? And the mystery of the God man's rebirth through philosophy. So the mystery schools, I've actually had people uh, text me, uh, send me messages, messages and everything, ask me, um, hey, uh, Chief, what what's a good mystery school to get into brother unless you want to try to do something that no, none of them have ever done uh learn diving into the mystery schools is pointless what do you think all them mummies are still wrapped up for every single mummy that is in egypt all bought into the mystery schools, which they thought they would be resurrected by the knowledge uh, and gnos the 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 gnos the gnosis. All right, basically, they thought they would 
be born again through the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That is what the mystery schools are about. Rebirth through philosophy. Okay. Now the lawgiver of Israel, uh, which is Moses, it's uh, a lot of you guys think it's Yahweh. That's a whole nother topic. Yahweh has to do with gematria. It's the tetragrammaton. It has to do with sacred geometry. All right. It was not a living being. It, 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 and that goes very, very deep. Okay. And I've done, I have a three part series on that called Yahweh the Blood Drunkard, which shows without a doubt using scripture. And mainly Christ's words. Uh, it's it mainly it shows beyond a doubt that the the one the one we call the Christ did not come on behalf of this being that people call Yahweh. Okay, and all even in the King James, the watered down King James version, it's all there. All the clues are there. You have to be a blind man. You have to you have to be deaf. Like he said, my children will hear my voice. My children will hear my and know my voice. OK, so if you if you don't know about this and you still having problems with this, I would recommend that you start with the three part teaching that's on my page. It's called Yahweh, the blood drunkard. It's it's all scripture based. This not my opinion. It's going back and forth. From Old Testament to Christ, Old Testament to Christ, okay, and then we get caught up, and people get caught up in what was his name, you know, uh, Yahushua, uh, uh, Yahusha, Yahushua, um, you know, uh, Jesus, or, or or this or that, or Emmanuel. Listen, it's all about the christ that's what everyone is not getting that you're talking about the ego when you say jesus that's like talking about you that's like saying that 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 iron bush is going to be born again iron bush is going to be resurrected no the iron bush or ron bush okay is the name that was given to the person that lives in this 3D material realm that is not the actual name of my soul, okay? The same as the name that you have right now on your birth certificate is not the name of your soul, okay? So if you think that, that, that if your name is Paul Jones, if you think Paul Jones is going to be born again, well, then you are mistaken. That was the mystery schools, and that's what all the royal family, the elites, that's what they're all buying into from this draconian lie. They have manipulated them into thinking that they can live as immortals through technology. And this has existed for a long time, as I'm going to show you. And the ones that we call, and, and, and for certain reasons, I'm just going to spell it out, J-E-W-S, the ones that are over there right now fighting these little fake orchestrated wars, they, they are, why do you think they come into the White House and a group of them, no matter who the president is, they come in there and crowd the White House. They have the Pope kissing their hand, these people. And everyone else kisses the Pope's ring. It's the, the Pope is, ki uh, there's pictures of the Pope kissing the, the Rothschild's hand and these J E W S, certain ones, kissing their hands. Why do you think? Because they are the ones that have this secret, hidden knowledge that. I'm I'm going to give a little bit to you a little bit of it tonight. Now so basically the lawgiver of Israel which is 
we call Moses is known to have has is also known to have com compiled several works other than those uh, generally attributed to him. Okay, the writings now are are um, usually commonly called the sixth and seventh books of Moses. Um. Now they say that they're some people say that they're older than the the first five books. Well, according to my studies, in reality, they're actually uh, they're they're treaties on black magic, and they they didn't gain credit until during the middle what we call the Middle Ages. Um, so there's these books that are called the sixth and seventh, but similar to like the lesser key of Solomon. Okay. Now these books do have certain truths to them and I would not recommend you go reading them because there's only certain people here that are called to go across enemy lines like, uh, special forces. Okay. Not everyone is here is called to dive into the mysteries so so you can so we all can know the mysteries because guess what it's magnetic it, it's j just like i said before they come as angels of light it takes an anointed person who is here specifically for that purpose to go and do this a certain task that is that person's destiny it's it's what they are incarnated here to do for the kingdom and they knew it before they even came out of the water okay it's just it takes because of the world and the the demiurge creation everything here is made for you to forget who you truly are which is your soul which the name does not matter so I know some of you are probably wondering, well, what's the name? How do I find out the name of my soul? That's just like you asking, what's the true name of God? Okay. First of all, we need to stop using these English words. We need to break the habit because English is the Babylonian language. If you don't know, it's the melting pot of all the different languages together. English is the same forwards as it is backwards and, and more. Anagrams, this, that, the other. You know, if you if you if you live right, it's forward. If you live backwards, it's evil. So, you know, it's all English is reverse spell casting. And it's usually you're doing it upon yourself. So it's, you know, it's a reason you have two ears and one mouth. You should be listening twice as much as you speak, okay? Now, I know there's a lot of people who who have a wealth of knowledge and may you may want to be a teacher, but wanting is lusting, okay? I can I can tell you that people like Brother BC and I, we didn't want our way into this position. We knew that one day it was coming, and a, a lot of times, speaking for myself, I was like Jonah. Okay, I was I kept going the opposite way because I knew what was calling me, but I just kept saying, "But just give me just this. I just just let me get this out of my system a little bit longer until I got thrown off that boat." I got thrown into that ocean and I was saved the same way Jonah was. Okay. All right. So, so, and a lot of you can relate to that now. So there's these books floating around about, you know, the lesser key of Solomon. And then you got the, uh, what's it called? The necronomic, the ne necronomicon, or whatever it is, stay away from these books. There's no reason at this point. There's no reason for you to be chasing this knowledge. It's pointless. You can come on and learn the 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 Christic truth without learning all the 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 babbage, 
all the, the, the nasty filthiness with it that's within these texts and these black magic books for you to basically go full circle and realize, hmm, I, it all goes back to Christ, back to square one where, where I began, okay? Sometimes it can give you a more intimate relationship with Christ because of it, but you don't have to do it with your conscious will saying, I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go search out mystery school knowledge, you know? It's, you, so a lot of people, and you would, you'd you be surprised how many people hit me up asking me things like this. That's why I'm even mentioning it. So um, there's something called the esoteric teachings of S.O.D., S-O-D. Kind of like, uh, wasn't Sod or was it King Sod or King Zod on Superman or something like that? But it's something called the esoteric teachings of Sod. And basically what that means is the Jewish mysteries of Adonai. Okay. Now you've been told Adonai is a good thing. You know, Adonai means, uh, you were told Adonai means Lord, and, you know, that's connected to Christ and this and that. Well, it's not. Adonai is connected to one of the archons, okay? And as a matter of fact, it's the, it's the archon that's connected to the sun. The, the, the sun, the, the solar disk that you see in the sky, because that's not the real sun. And I don't mean it's a sun simulator. I mean, it's a focal point. It's literally a reflection of light. The only light that's coming in here into this, this demiurgic creation that we're in this plane is coming from Polaris. Okay. There is no other light and Polar and it's a plasmic light. There is no other light coming in to, into this realm that you see, except coming from Polaris, the star that is fixed at the very top of the dome, where it's it's a little circle, it's where the elites are gonna try to escape and this and that. And it's really what all the spraying in the sky, well, it's, it's not the only reason, you know, they're spraying in the sky because they don't want you to see the, this, this. if you read scripture, you'll see that the stars and, and the things in the sky, it says are made for signs first. Sign, signs is listed first in the, in the original text. I don't know what, what, what scripture you read, but in the original text, it says they were made for signs and then seasons. So seasons come secondary to, this, to the luminaries. So the luminaries are, 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 are primarily for signs. So they're covering them up with all this spray. And not only is the spray to cover it up, the spray is when this event happens that we call the, it's not the seventh seal, it's the sixth seal. They're going to try to escape on the sixth seal, y'all. And I'm going to tell you, it may, it'll probably be another teaching. I have to break that down. The seventh seal is, is, is brought, about, brought about from the amalgamation of the aftermath of the sixth seal. Basically, the seventh seal is going to be the, the leftover mankind like a zombie wasteland. And, uh, you know, that's why. The, the, you know, those, the 144,000, we're going to be sealed on our foreheads in the, during the fifth seal. So we're way ahead of the game by then. And if you don't already know, 144,000 has nothing to do with 144,000 people, souls. Okay. It has to do with your genome, the, your, the crystal, the alkaline crystalline structure in your DNA that's going to get activated that they call junk DNA. And this is also connected to this eclipse that's coming. Okay. And something that they call the devil's comet that um, is on a 71 year cycle. 
And this year, it's also mirroring the 17-year cicada cycle, as above, so below. It's the reflection. So we have the eclipse in the same, in the same day. We have the 71-year the cycle of what they call the Devil's Comet um, that may be visible depending on where you're at that illuminates a green light we're going to get into that on part two tonight uh me and brother bc but it's 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 a reflection okay this is the first time that the 71 year cycle of the devil's comet and an eclipse and the cicadas the 17 year cicada cycle have all been aligned okay so it's all aligned. And what's 71? So the 17 on earth and the 71 in the heavens, that's 88. What's 88? Okay. We know what 88 is. That's infinity. Uh, or you could take it as, some people can take it as eternity. Okay. But um, getting back to this Jewish mysteries of Adonai. All right, so you got the gematria, you got something called notericon, and then you got something called the temura, the or, or or temura. All right, now everyone's into gematria, never even heard of notericon or the uh, t temura or the temura. Um, it's ancient Jewish super physics. Okay, listen to what listen to what I'm telling you. This is ancient Jewish super physics. This is why I said you see them every time a president uh, goes in office. You see a group of these bearded men in all black. They're the ones that wear the cube, the Saturn cube on the head, and this and that. Uh, it's called. Uh, Brother BC is called T E M U R A H is uh, Tamara, and the other one is Notericon, which is N O T A R I K O N. So, spell that uh, second one. Come on, come on, come on. The second one is Notericon. It's N O T. A R I K O N. Now the these if you're not familiar with this, then you're not you're not getting the mysteries that are actually I mean through through the great spirit anything is possible. You don't have to study none of this crap. And 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 brother BC and I are perfect examples of that. We don't sit around. If if if, if y'all think that we're sitting around like studying this stuff, then you are sadly mistaken. Okay, I'm a family man. I barely have time to come on here and do what I'm doing now, let alone sit around studying uh, these these people with their secret codes and stuff. I'm just trying to explain it to you guys now. As I said earlier, gematria is meant not only the exchange of letters for the numerical equivalent, but it's also the method by determining by an analysis of its measurements, the mystic purpose for which a building or other object was constructed. Basically, we talk about the first Masons. Before, before Masons, this predates Masons. We talking about before before the temple was built. We're talking about before uh um what's his name? The ritual the dude that built that said to build uh Solomon's temple, the uh Hiram Abiff. We're talking about before all that. Okay, so it says um in Genesis so here's an example of 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 how they do it in genesis uh it says and lo three men equal and so that's it just says that and lo three men now 
in numerical value that basically they're talking about uh in, in hebrew it's uh michael gabriel and uh raphael okay so these are um uh, but michael was spelled mick ha l so micaiah mikhail gabriel and raphael each of these in gematria equals 701 now this uh, assuming the size of a scaling to be 11 9 and 6 which if you don't know this i'm talking about ge geometry this is this is sacred geometry a triangle a scale a, a, a scaling triangle of such dimensions would then be an appropriate symbol of jehovah so when these people were so the verse you read it says and lo three men but really they're talking about michael gabriel raphael which are all equal 701 they're talking about a, a scaling and a, a, a triangle the dimensions of a triangle and they're given a symbol of jehovah and the sum of the three sides would uh would be 26. now the gematria for yahweh in hebrew is also 26. there's in there's a lot of 26s i'm not even going that's that that's a teaching in itself but that's just one example of how they do it so the yod hey vav hey was sacred geometry and that's what gematria really is it's all about shapes and buildings and 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 energy it wasn't just about building them sending the code like hey guys i want you to build a triangle building a pyramid i mean could have been it could have been how they sent some of that information but these people like i said had the secret to super physics what do you think they were carrying around in the ark of the covenant why do you think if somebody didn't go in there wrapped in basically the same kind of gear that someone dealing with plutonium or uranium today would their hair would fall out their eyes would start bleeding out and everything and they would die within about two weeks from radiation poison the same exact thing happened to people that did not go in that that went into the holy of holies or touched the ark of the covenant that did not have certain proper gear on okay we talk about ancient super physics all right and these people have like we people have mystified it and called it you know fallen angel technology um no this comes from man okay you just don't know the begin the true story or the beginning of who man really is and this is the journey of you remembering who you really are adam the true adam the son of man okay man is higher than a king and that's what that that's what this is all about that's why christ said in one of my favorite books the gospel of thomas you will not you will not enter the kingdom of heaven until the two become one until your clothes are on the ground until you shed your clothes and, and you not and your clothes are on the ground now we're gonna get into that i'm gonna break that down you're gonna leave here with some knowledge tonight that you can turn into wisdom that i'm pretty sure you have not heard yet from anywhere all right so let me see how much more i want to talk about this gematria stuff um so gematria also includes the system of discovering the the arcane meaning of a word the real meaning of a word by analyzing the size and arrangement of the strokes employed in the formation of the various letters so guess what guys it, that's not in english that has nothing to do with writing in english strokes and how you do strokes and stuff they're talking about ancient languages if you don't know how to write in ancient hebrew if or or or, or, or 
Sumerian uh, cuneiform. You're not doing no Jamaat. You're playing Goo Goo Gaga internet games. So stop it, okay? The Great Spirit is, is calling you right now to separate yourselves. Come out from among them, all right? So Gematria was then employed by the Greeks as well as the Jews. Uh, the books of the New Testament particularly those all all the ones attributed to saint john are almost all uh have examples of its use okay the gospel according to saint john uh, is said to have been discovered in a cavern under the temple of jerusalem right uh and it said that it had been secreted, meaning let out slowly, long prior to the Christian era. What does that mean? That means the Gospel of John and everything John wrote is older. He, it's older than the Christ. It's old. The Gospel of John existed before Christ even incarnated. Is what what the ancient Kabbalistic, uh, I guess, you know, I don't want to say truth, but their truth is. So what the belief is, is that the work, the writings of St. John are originally written without any specific reference to the man we call Jesus. The statements that are in St. John's that are accredited to Jesus were originally mystical discourses delivered by the personification of the universal mind. Y'all, did you just catch that? That means that, just like I said earlier, Jesus. Yahweh, Yeshua, Emmanuel, uh, Yahusha, Yahushua. That's the name of an avatar. The Christ is the source code that is in you and in me. He said, I abide in you, you abide in me, and I'm in the Father. Okay, that's what he said. Now, we could get into what he meant by father. That's a whole nother, a whole nother teaching. But to keep it simple, we'll just keep it simple for, for tonight. So what Christ was saying was, I abide in you, you abide in me. That's the same. That's what the universal mind is. That's the source code. That's not the demiurgic mind, the Saturnic, the L, the El Elyon, the Most High, this this being that's controlling everything, and and you know, uh, got the seven Elohim, and and I and I talked about it before. Um, I think it's a few teachings back on my page about how the archons are what we call the planets and. It's the original seven Elohim. And it was only one who called himself El, or the Canaanites called him El Elyon, the Most High, being because at nighttime, Saturn, which is, they didn't, they didn't have a word planet. They had, they had the star, the, the stars that moved. Okay. That's the, the so what, when the stars moved on not a fixed pattern, they they associated, they said, hey, man, these stars must got free will, which they do. They And then they started realizing it, it seems like they're enforcing certain kind of energy, which they were, because L or Saturn split himself up into six other beings, so seven all together. And, and gave them all different characteristics of himself that were intense, that he broke up into the Zodiac and into the ages and all that, okay? Now, we can still get the truth. We can still get signs from the, tr the true origin of soul, 
okay, the same way that the Christ made it, came through all of that, through space time. Let me tell you what, what allows you to leave space and time and all of it. The frequency of love, period. The frequency of love. Uh, what what the eastern what, what the eastern people call the heart chakra? Okay, that's that's the frequency, and that has to do with what's coming with this eclipse too. With this, what they call Devil's Comet, which has a green light to it, which green is associated with your heart. And I'm going to tell you what it does in in the next teaching that me and Brother BC are, are going to do about the eclipse. We still have a few days left. Uh, before the eclipse hits, so you guys will get the truth about it. What I will say right now is you don't have any need to panic about anything, no matter where you live. There's no fear. There's no panic. So stop buying into all this crap on the Internet, uh, you know, that this or that is going to happen. The CERN machines coming on at the same time. I'm going to tell you everything, the reason the CERN machine's coming on, what they're trying to do, the shooting missiles, or the shooting rockets into the eclipse. One, The second one, they're shooting in, at, at 322, 322, we all know skull and bone. By this point, ladies and gentlemen, you should feel like when you hear these stupid little things, that it's like goo goo gaga baby food. It has no power. Skull and bones, Freemasons, Illuminati, the the the, the royal family, the Vatican. The, they don't you feel it by now that they are losing their power? They have they never had it in the first place, but by you awakening. That's the Christos in you rising. Guess what's happening? Just like in, in Revelation when John cried. He said, none in heaven and none on earth could open the seals. And he wept, he wept so loud. He cried loud. Dropped to his knees and cried so hard. And the angel standing next to him said, what are you crying for? He said, look. The son of man is opening it. What are you crying for? There is one that can open it. So guess what that is? That's the Christ that abides in you. So the further we go along, the less fear you should feel and the more love and happiness, the more smile should be on your face, the closer you should feel that victory is approaching. Not the... the Something that's scary and spooky and, oh, my God, this, this is getting ready to get crazy. Yeah. Oh, it's a food shortage. Well, didn't he tell you that man survives not on breath, bread alone? I mean, he, the Christ told you everything you need to know. And he, I mean, he said it in just a few sentences. The man spoke less than anybody in the book and said the most. This th this being spoke less than anyone in the entire book that is worshipped more than the, the origin of your soul, more than the source code, which is Christ, which which is the true. Uh, what is the source code? That means that's the true creation. That's that's the that's the real deal. That's the one that's going to last. Everything going to perish, but guess what's still going to remain? My word. What's my word? My source code. The code that I wrote. The source code that I wrote from the very beginning that started it all. Ain't nothing else started without this. Not no archons. Not Saturn. Not this. Not that. Not these, these stupid light beings that are trying to enforce their will and make man in their image. Let us make man in our image. Let us do this and let us do that. The Elohim. All right. No, 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 no. What they did was they hacked the code. They found a way to hack the source code. And that's why the Christ had to get sent in to reset and let people say, let people see 
That way it was a visible testification and witnessing that the source code is still available for you to rewrite right on the spot. That's why he said you shall do greater things, but you have to know that you have the source code abiding in you. All right. That is the Christ. So some of you are getting it. That means your seals are opening. Guess who's opening the seals? You're not. Chief Iron Bush. Yeah, that sounds so fancy. Chief, big Chief Iron Bush. You think I'm opening seals? Brother BC, teaching day, day in and day out, giving you guys all his energy, giving you all his time down here in this dimension. Teaching every day, all day, this brother. That's all he does is give, give himself. Do you think he's opening his seals? You think he's doing it? You think I'm doing it? No, guess who's doing it? The Christ. Where? What did the Christ say? Did he say, well, when, when they tell you, look up in the sky. When they tell you in the ocean, when he's in the caverns, when he's when they tell you here, when he's there, when he's in the temple. Oh, yeah. When he's performing miracles, they're going to perform miracles in the skies and everything, y'all. It's coming. It's, it's already here. They just haven't activated it all yet. You know why? Because the children that have the source code in them that is already being activated. You're remembering. What is remembrance? That means we are becoming members once again. Not remembering just who you are. You're remembering that it's one soul. There's only one soul. The not souls. The origin of soul. That means it's Christ. It's only one soul. You're remembering. We are coming back together, remembering, hey, you're me and I'm you. We are we're we are just experiencing this reality from a different angle. And we all are here to do a different duty, a different a, a, a different calling. Okay. Not not just work. Yeah, it takes a little work, but work ain't going to open your seals. Work ain't going to uh, get you into the kingdom. None of that. Because lest any man should... Well, you know what lest any man should boast means? That, that doesn't mean you're going to boast. That means you, you ain't even going to have the opportunity. You won't even have the opportunity for a thought to even cross your mind and say, man, you know what? I must have did pretty good down there. Nope, you didn't do nothing. You did pretty crappy, actually. And that's your ego. That's going to get subdued when Satan is placed on his leash for a thousand years. Guess who Satan is? Now, we say Saturn and Satan and this and that. Listen, Satan is actually you. Guess who the Demiurge is? It's actually you. It's actually you. And I'm going to explain that. But it's it, you're going to subdue it because once the Christ rises, rises again, you know, and we could get it, we could peel back the layer of the onion of the 33 vertebrae rising to the pineal gland and the pituitary gland and the mixing of the milk and the honey and, and the opening of the first eye and the, thine eye be single and full of light. Okay, that's just one little baby layer that is that is part of it. That's just one part of it. So don't get stuck on that neither, thinking... You know, and it does go back like to the seminaries, which the original seminaries was based on semen retention and stuff, because these people knew this knowledge freely. It was it was the same way your your children go get brainwashed uh, and indoctrinated today. Um, there was a different kind of knowledge back then being given. 
Okay. Now there's always been evil and good, agreeable and disagreeable, but like scripture says, it's there's going there's a time coming that that there ain't gonna be no time, there ain't never been no time worse, and it never will be a time worse ever again. Because it's a new earth and new heavens coming, and there's not even going to be a sun in the sky. But that's a whole nother teaching. Let me get back on to the topic. All right. So let me get past that Gematria stuff. That's, I, I really, that stuff really doesn't uh, impress me. But um, basically, the, the, the books of John were found under the temple at Jerusalem uh, before the Christian era. So they and they were let out slowly during the Christian era. So basically, there was never any reference to a man named Jesus. The whole story was talking about the universal mind. OK, and that includes the epistles and the apocalypse revelation. That's what I've, I've told you guys before, that the book of Revelation in Greek was uh, called the Apocalypse of Jesus Christ. Now, in Greek, Jesus Christ, the way it's written in in Greek, and I have spoken directly to the number one Greek um, translator, transliterator in the world. I have spoken directly to him, and he has told me the way it's written, it's clear that this was not a name, that this was a description, and it is the way it was written in Greek. Jesus Christ, it says, he so which riseth to. So they're talking about you and I. The apocalypse is the poke. It's the poke to wake up. So yes, are we in the apocalypse? Oh, yes, we are. Are you awakening? Are you receiving the poke? A lot of you are receiving a poke tonight through this teaching. A lot of you receive a poke every time you come through. Uh, you know, the teachings of Brother B.C. Or, or, or myself, or maybe you have someone else you listen to, too. And it's not just about us. It's about the great spirit that, you know, is working through somebody, not people talking about aliens and and from, you know, there's in, in star seeds and this and that. Listen, stars are reflections of right down here. And and uh, and some of them stars are trapped archons, trapped angels, trapped ones that got trapped. That where 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 the true where they either went against the false god L and rebelled against him, and and he trapped them there, or the the origin of soul intervened and said, no, nope, you ain't going nowhere. You just gonna spin around in the waters. Since you want to play around and you want to. And, 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 and here's another fact for you guys. And I've mentioned this before about the guy that started NASA or whatever, the guy, the first guy up on the moon on his tombstone where he put the, the, the verse in Psalms where he, he said, the firmament showeth God's handiwork. You think this man was really referring to the to to the 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 origin of soul? to christ you think he was referring to christ no he was referring to these beings that made the division between heaven and earth that's what the firmament was that the firmament was not put there by the the one that we call the one that abides in us that firmament shows the handiwork of the one the l the one that the L eats, make sure eats the energy, okay? And there's more than one firmament. There's four. And I'm going to break down that. I'm going to break that to you if I can get to it and stop running my mouth. And please let me know, Brother BC, if I cut out or anything. Am I doing good so far? Super good. Super, super, good. Good. super good. That's what's up. I'm in a whole other state, maybe the East Coast. Got a good connection over here or something. Because every other time I'm out there in Kansas City, boy, every five minutes, you say, brother, you cut out on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see here. Uh, let me see where I want to go. All 
Um. Okay, so basically, the, and we were talking about the Tamora earlier, and I saw Brother BC was typing it in. What they do with this is they they break the they break the alphabet, the Hebrew, the Aleph bet. They break it into two equal parts, and they write it in horizontal lines, right? So that the letters of the lower row can be exchanged for those in the upper row, or vice versa. So the the word the 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 tetragrammaton or or Yahweh, um, actually can be, um, the word they they can use is uh, kuzu, k u z u, um. Now, many of you, I know many of you have never ever in your life heard that kuzu. So this is an ancient form of the, the ineffable name, uh, kuzu, okay, of their God. And it, this all goes back to Moloch and Baal and all of that. It's all connected, okay? It, it would take too long in this teaching to, to break that all down. But it goes back to the God of the mountain. El Shaddai, okay, and the mountain represented conquering the mother. So that's why, if you want to know about the mountains, why they always say the fallen angels went to the mountains, or this one was at the mountains, or they're always at mountains, it's because prior to them setting up civilizations and hijacking civilizations, um, the the mountain always represented the mother. Pretty much everything here was a, a mother goddess veneration. And it's not so much about mother goddess. It was about the feminine energy. That's And people get it misconstrued all the time. So now I got to start calling God the she? No. You just got to know the true story, not his story. And the true story is for thousands and thousands of years, the feminine energy was revered. Okay. Um, I would assume a little bit more than the masculine energy. Nowadays, it's not even close. It's all masculine energy. If you, I'm pretty sure you go up to your nearest church right now and you ask them, who, who, who's the Elohim? Why does it say, in Genesis, you made man in our image. I guarantee, I'm willing to say 10 out of 10. I'm talking about brick and mortar uh, churches. I'm I'm willing to say 10 out of 10, if not 9 out of 10, is going to tell you, oh, that means the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they're going to tell you the Holy Ghost is a him. So that's triple masculine. Okay? So do you know where that comes from? comes from the Vatican, it comes from Catholicism. All of that comes from Catholicism. All right. So let me get let me get back on track here. So um so basically the, the translations that we have today of the scriptural writings, they do not adequately express the spirit of the original documents. Like we have like a sprinkle of the original spirit that was put into these documents. All right. Now there was something called, they used to call it the book of God in, in, in English. It would, that it would be called the book of God, not the Bible, not the Torah, this it was literally a different word for it called the book of God. I don't have it written here right now. Uh, but since then, it has been edited and launched on the whole world by first, it was by a man named uh Hilkiah. All right, Hilkiah, and then th when he translated it, uh, that copy disappeared. And the priest Ezra was sent under the Persian and Babylonian council to make a new Bible. This is the first time the word Bible is introduced when the priest Ezra was sent 
to rewrite it when mysteriously this the original book of god disappeared um that was that was supposedly written by the scribe hilkiah so um and when ezra rewrote it it was copied from the horned letters a lot of you guys ain't gonna know what i'm talking about this is hebrew it goes from pre canaanite hebrew to to uh you know even bantu to paleo hebrew and now modern hebrew so what ezra did he copied it from the horn letters into square letters and from that point on it was corrupted beyond recognition now this this was like uh what seven like 600 700 bc so that means the scriptures was already corrupted about 700 800 years before the christ incarnated um so they were already you know messing everything up as, as far as writing concerns that's why you can't worship a book that's why a book is a book you you like your any book is just like any other book you read it and and you let the great spirit or if you want to say holy spirit guide you and lead you to what it your that your soul is meant to see and learn at that time it's not to be read from front to back and you reading it like it's a fiction book and then you close that then say oh man that was pretty good that's not it's not how it works okay so basically and what they did was they they started uh omitting things interpolations uh premeditated perversions i mean the manuscripts were copied and recopied by scribes who not only made errors in letters and words but permitted themselves to introduce new material into the text like scribes was just making up stuff saying by themselves saying you know what I th i'm i'm gonna add this in there or they would combine uh things in one manuscript writings composed by different men a good example of this is micah and jeremiah all right they 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 tell you micah wrote all this or jeremiah wrote all this but really it was a group of different people um also isaiah and zachariah i the book of isaiah even though a lot of us you know even christ referred to it um the book of isaiah was not written completely by a man named isaiah it was a compilation of different people um same with zachariah and what i'm telling you guys is facts y'all this is not i'm not like reading this out of a book this is what has been revealed to me do i read books of yes of course but i'm telling you this is what has been revealed to me by the great spirit and confirmed now the the kabbalists say never has the christian world been in possession of the hidden scrolls which contain the secret doctrine of israel let me repeat that the people that are running this world the elites the j-e-w-s rather rather or not that you you want to argue about who the real hebrew israelites this that the other I am not talking about that. I'm talking about the people that right now call themselves the J-E-W-S. Right now. They openly will tell you never has the Christians had in their possession at any time the hidden scrolls that contain the secret doctrine of Israel. Okay. Um like the lost the lost they they call it the mosaic mysteries that are they're they're woven into the fabric of the torah uh but you gotta you gotta know some of the things that i've been teaching you a little bit here tonight so 
what the rabbis of the of the the JEWS say that Christendom has never never has understood the Old Testament and probably never will. And they said, in fact, the Old Testament is the exclusive possession of the Jewish faith. Basically, they're telling you, if you think you're a Christian, they're letting you know that the God that they call Yahweh, that they worship, is not your God. Ain't got nothing to do with Christ. Christ didn't come on his behalf, ain't got nothing to do with him. That's why they murdered him, because that wasn't their Messiah. Guess who? what Messiah that they're waiting on? They're waiting on their, their uh, messianic figure that we call the Antichrist. That is who their Messiah is. They don't believe. Why do you think they murdered him? They murdered the man. Tortured him for what? Because he flipped over a table and had some money on it. He messed with the banksters. That's when the problems began. They wasn't going to murder him until guess what? He messed with the money. Same thing as today. If you get in the way, everybody's talking about this digital currency coming. Guess what? If they wanted to come, it's coming. Are you preparing? Are you learning? I've been saying this for years now. We've been talking about it for years. You're more worried about an eclipse. Do you know how to grow food? You worried about an eclipse on April 8th. You didn't say, what do we do? What's this, what does this mean, uh, Chief Iron? But what, 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 what does this tip? I need you. I want to know from you. What, what does this mean? What, listen. Uh, even though we survived not on bread alone, it'd be better for you to concentrate on planting some food in your yard and making sure that your children have something to eat so you, when we go through this, and they'll be provided for, because whether you know it or not, there are two separate timelines being played out on this, what we call Earth realm. And that's how you know Christ was the the story of Christ was given to everyone. Because how do some Native Americans that call themselves Hopi, Hopis in Southwestern uh, North, uh, North America, how do they know the, the prophecies? They might not use the word Christ. They might not use this, that, the other. But they know what's going on. Okay? Same thing as other different cultures and, and, th and different people. Okay? You, when you get caught up in trying to tell somebody they have to say a certain prayer, repeat after me, and you got to read this book and this and that, guess what you just did? You just introduced them into idolatry. Congratulations. Oh, I just led them to the Lord. No, you just led them to idolatry. That's what you just did. You want to lead them to the origin of soul, you want to lead them to the source code, you lead them to the Christ that it that resides and abides in them. How do you do that? You do it mainly by your walk. You only use words when necessary. That's how you lead somebody to the true Christ. Only use words when necessary. Let your life speak for you. That's how he did it. They, went, they, they were in awe. People were just touching his, this man, the way he walked in the same flesh and avatar that you're in right now, people got healed and he never took credit for it. The woman got healed just by touching his garment. People got healed by just from being in the shadow of Peter. Why? You think Peter turned around and said, I healed you. My shadow healed you. Even Christ himself said, your faith has made you whole. See, today, faith, we, we mistake faith with belief. They've watered you down to make faith this belief. Oh, I got to believe. No, nah, believe, got believe. Belief and believe has the word lie in it. L-I-E. You believe in, 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 in the tooth fairy. Yank out next time one of your children lose teeth, put it under your pillow. 
and and see if you what you wake up with the next day. See if you wake up with a hundred dollar bill. That's belief. That's what they've turned faith into. See, you don't have, and it's the reason he said the faith of a mustard seed. He, he's he said it at that time in in the scripture says the smallest of seeds. Well. Actually, the mustard seed is very small, but it's not the smallest of seeds. There's smaller seeds. But the mustard seed is the smallest circular seed. So what was he saying? There's other seeds that's small. The, the poppy seed is is smaller than the uh, the mustard seed. But the poppy seed got like, uh, looks like it's been cut like a diamond. Almost like a tetragrammaton or, or, or some kind of weird geometric shape. And, you know, in poppy, we know what comes from poppy plants, uh, 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 opium and things like that. So Christ said the faith of a mustard seed. Well, guess what? The mustard seed is round. So what was he trying to say? What's round? It's it's all knowing it's 360 it's all the way around meaning you your faith has to be complete it's got to connect it got to be no end and no beginning that means outside of time that means it didn't it ain't no end to your faith or beginning or to your faith or you know if this happens or just give me a sign no 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 the days of the signs is over the only sign you're going to get is the sign from the, the just the, the sign of Jonah. What was that? You're going to get thrown in the ocean. You're going to you're going to come close to being killed. That's the only sign you're going to get if you don't awaken right now and get them seals open inside of you. Um, Let me see, Brother BC. Let me see how much further I want to go with this because I think the Great Spirit has been is doing pretty good, man, right now. Hey, hey, uh, you know, you know, I put you on, on Instagram, Instagram, Instagram and we on TikTok live right now. Okay. All right. Well, so I'm with that being said, I'm let me get a sip of this water and I'm gonna go into something. We're going to top it off with something real interesting, and then uh, I'm a, we'll take a little break, and then, uh, like we talked about earlier, come back on, and we'll get into this eclipse stuff. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So. Now, like I said before, they said, never has the Christian world been in possession of the hidden scrolls which contain the sec secret doctrine of Is. Israel. Well, we also know that the secret doctrine, doctrine of Israel, a lot of that came from Egypt too. A lot of it came from Canaan as well. So we're talking about an amalgamation of secret doctrine from that whole area. I mean, even ancient Sumer. We're talking back. I mean, we're talking about the mysteries going back six, seven thousand years, y'all. So that that that's the type of, like I said earlier, they are in possession of super physics, something that you would call magic. That's why people call it magic, because until science can come up with a explanation for the the mass population, uh, you know, it's called magic, and. You know, I'm sure you've heard the word that the uh, the victor to war uh, holds the pen to history. The the victor of war. Well, what they do with that pen is every time they defeat somebody, what they do is they demonize anything that was good in their culture. So, like I said before, before these beings that we call uh, Anuna. Anunnaki, uh, B'nai Ha Elohim. They weren't the Elohim. They were the sons. B'nai means sons. B'nai Ha Elohim is the sons of the Elohim, which is the Anunnaki, who we call the Anunnaki. Um, when these beings showed up on the scene, which they're, they're soulless. 
that's how they live so long. They're basically made like in, uh, they're artificial. They're artificially made. They're almost like cyborg type things. It, it's basically what we're coming, we're coming full circle. It happens over and over again. Um, and that's what they're doing right now with the, you know what, the, 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 the uppercut, the hook and the jab, um, you know, that's, that's what it's starting. They, it's, it's already begun. They're mixing and they're trying to make these, uh, a cyborg type characters that are just human enough to remain, to keep the realm going to keep the spark that all spark going but to to control it in a way where this th these beings are trying to outsmart the 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 origin the, the the origin of soul pretty much that's what they're trying to do they're trying to outsmart that's the tree of knowledge of good and evil they're trying to outsmart the tree of life is what they're trying to do and it's just not going to happen. That's the difference between immortal and eternal. So, and that's another thing I always say is right now is a good time to correct your language. Do not use the word immortal. Immortal means that you're trying to live in the same body on the same plane of existence forever. And guess what? They're going to get the desires of their heart. The same way you're gonna get, you're gonna receive the desires of your heart. Many of you already have it. Many of you already have the desires of your heart. It's just some people that are around you aren't, don't have the desires of their heart, and you may be yoked to them, and it makes an uncomfortable situation. It can make you know a little bit of misery, a little bit of conflict. But, you know, that's the thorn in your side. But many of you already have the desires of your heart. You have a family. You have people that love you. And you love. You love. It don't matter if you're alone. If you love, you're not alone because you're connected to all of us that are on that love frequency. So you're not alone. Um, Where was I? I um. Okay, uh, I might backtrack a little bit so I can get back on track. Um, oh, so, so you know, they said, like, the Christians don't have none of the mysteries, that, and they probably never will. Well, in the opening chapter of Genesis, it stated that after creating light and separating it from darkness, now I'm speaking of the original text. The King James ain't going to tell you this. The seven Elohim divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, having thus established the inferior universe in perfect accord with the esoteric teachings of the Hindu, the Egyptian, and the Greek mysteries. Brothers and sisters, let me repeat that if you didn't get it. <laughs> All right. This is this is coming from breaking down codes, as I told you, or the Tamora and the No Terracon. This is coming from secret scrolls. This was revealed to me by the great spirit. I can't even tell you how. That's all that's the only explanation I can give you. In the opening chapter of Genesis, it is stated that after creating light and separating it from darkness, the seven Elohim divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, having thus established the inferior, not superior, the inferior universe in perfect accord with the esoteric teachings. Esoteric means we talk about the mystery schools of the Hindu, Egyptian, and Greek mysteries. The Elohim next turned their attention to the production of the flora and fauna, and lastly, man. So they made 
plant life and things like that down here in this simulation, first they split it. First they made sure they split us, split it. They split us up from the real world, the real planes of existence, and and got us trapped in this. And and they and they made sure they put it enough through technology. They split the water that you can't even fathom. It, the, you want to know what outer space is? It's water. Okay. So they split that. Next thing they did was made flora and fauna down here. The last thing they did was man. And in scripture it says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Okay, and later it says, so God create, created man in his own image. So it went from let us make man in our image after our likeness to so God created man in his own image. Then it says in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay. Then he told them to replenish the earth. Now, listen to these key words I'm saying. Let me repeat it one more time. They said our, he made, first it was ours. It was all ours, ours, ours. Then it went to God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And then it says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish. Replenish is a key word. Replenish the earth. Now, consider all the pronouns that was just used. I mean, we're in the age of pronouns right now. So just listen to all those different pronouns that was just used. You guys should know what pronouns are, especially right now in this day and age. Okay, so um, at first, the plural, which is Elohim, and androgynous, androgynous, Hebrew word Elohim. Elohim is androgynous, according to the ancient Hebrew text. Do you know what androgynous means? It means male and female. It means male and female, both in one being, okay? And was translated into the singular and sexless word God. So first it was the androgynous Hebrew word Elohim, which was well known, Elohim was androgynous and it meant more than one. Later it was translated into the singular and sexless word God. Okay. Now, the reason they did this is pretty clear that they feared that had the word been correctly translated, as the male and female creative agency, which was Elohim or God, um, was is basically what it, is the you know the fancy English way of saying it. The male and female creative agencies is what the Elohim was. Most Christians would have been justly accused of worshiping a plurality of gods in the face of their. Uh, claims to monotheism. Now, the plural form of the pronouns us and our reveals unmistakably that uh, this was a pantheistic nature of divinity. Pantheistic, again, like pan, means like more than one. one so it was f feminine and masculine. It was together. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it was. It was androgynous. It had both together. 
So the androgynous constitution of the Elohim or God is disclosed in the next verse where when, when referring to God is said to have created man in his own image, male and female, or more properly, as the division of the sexes had not yet taken place. Meaning, we call God a him, but the first, cre when, 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 when it's all in the etymology, y'all, the first creations were androgynous beings, just like the Elohim. There was no man and woman. They both, it, it, it was exactly like the Elohim, androgynous. And this goes, this ain't even just in the Bible. This is in, like, ancient tribes like the Dogon people and stuff have these stories. So don't think this is just, you know, um, only exclusive to the Bible. So, um, so created man in his own image, male and female, or more properly, the, the division of sexes had not yet taken place. This is a death blow to the time honor concept that God is a masculine entity only. This, this, this right here alone proves beyond a doubt that, that what you call God is not just a masculine father God that is only a masculine energy and that's it. It's just a he, he, he. All right. If you go to this ancient etymology, all right, this is not my opinion. This is just a breakdown, like I said, of the ancient text. Um, um, you know, on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, they got a, a man with a beard and this and that. And that's when it all started. I was think Michelangelo painted that. And then from then on, it was always a man with a beard was God. Um, but the Elohim then order these androgynous beings. Remember, male and the female ain't been split yet. The, the creation that is walking around in their image is their androgynous. They then order the androgynous beings to be fruitful. Okay. Now note that neither the masculine nor the feminine principle as yet ex has yet existed in a separate state. They're still together. You have not heard them separated yet. You have not heard nothing that is even implies it. And lastly, we got the word replenish. The prefix re means back to an original or former state or position or repetition or re restoration. All right. This definite reference to a humanity existing prior to this story that we're given of this creation of man by these Elohim characters that are actually they're either the archons that are that we call the planets or they're the Beneha Elohim, the story of Enki and Enlil and all them clowns down here playing around with the DNA who are actually the Beneha Elohim or the Anunnaki. All right. So to replenish is basically saying, hey, man, we need y'all to go out here and, like, get this thing back to how it was. And that goes with the very first words in your Bible. In English, it says, in the beginning. In Hebrew, it says, Bereshith. If you write Bereshith down in English, it says, be reset. They're letting you know that this was a reset. And I'm getting ready to tell you which reset they was on all right so um let's see um 
Let me think. Let me think. All right. So, uh, Adam was considered at first to um, to represent the human mind, not a person, uh, you know, not a, a a being per se. Adam was was meant uh, in ancient times to represent the human mind, which could understand, and that's why it tells you. He he understood because he gave names to the creatures. So he understood, and that's why they tested him. These Enki and Enlil, they they tested him. They said, let's see what they what if what he called the animals. So he understood things and he gave names to all the animals, to the creatures, right? But guess what he could not comprehend and left nameless? The mystery of its own nature adam did not know who he was the same way you most of you don't really know who and what you are and that is the story of christ that is why the christ came that's what it's all about okay that's the connection from adam to christ that's why christ calls himself the son of man Okay, that's one of the reasons why. All right. He came to get you to remember who you are. All right. Adam didn't even know who he was. They messed with the DNA and everything, the 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 whoever you want to call them, Anunnaki, Beneha, Elohim. They had created something in their image. And they had an ability to learn, just like the Sumerian tablets say. They they could learn. They wanted like a slave race, just like the, the, the really ancient Sumerian tablets. So Adam had the ability to name every creature. He was naming all the animals. I mean, he was smart. Dude was slick with it. He was naming everything. Like, I'm, I'm going to call this an elephant. That, I'm going to call that a tiger. We're going to call that a platypus. We're going to call that a, a, a porcupine. Like, dude was nice with it. You know what I'm saying? But when it came to who he was, he left himself nameless. The mystery of his own nature. Okay? Now, later, Adam was likened to the monad, which is, if you've ever heard of Pythagoras, the Pythagorean uh, monad, which by virtue of its its state of perfect unity could dwell in the they call it the Edenic sphere. Basically, you call it the Garden of Eden. Uh, it was called the Edenic or Edenic sphere, which was a firmament. It was a dome. Okay, so by virtue of perfect unity which means the two were one, just like Christ said in, this, in the, the hidden gospel, secret gospel of Thomas. Once the two become one, until the two become one, you ain't entering into the kingdom. Okay? The two were one. Therefore, Adam was able to dwell in the spirit of Eden or the dome of Eden. When though a process that we can we can kind of say it's like fission. The monad became the duad. Okay? How how fission and fusion, how they did with the atomic bomb and all that. Well, they did that to the soul and the spirit. Okay? And they and they split the the um ma the energy, the masculine and feminine, like fission. The monad became the duad. And uh, this basically put man into discord and delusion. So the creature thus formed from this delusion was exiled from the, the, the dome of Eden, the Edenic sphere, exiled from its celestial home. Thus the twofold man was driven from paradise Belonging to the undivided creation and cherubim, 
uh, and a flaming sword. You guys know the story was placed on guard at the gates of the, it's called the causal world. It's where the causes happen, not the effects. We're in the world of effects, okay? As above, so below. So whatever happens down here already happened in the higher dimensions because we're not in the causal. We're on a microcosm. We are. We we manifest, and you know, people. You know, you hear people right now thinking they're getting powers and things, and they're they're meditate, they're hyper meditating and stuff, and trying to. Me Let me tell you something. That's called Luciferianism. When you listen. The Christ is natural. Everything will fall in place how it's supposed to. You don't have to go trying to meditate for three hours and then and see uh, 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 some kind of color ball floating in front of you and, and you and activate this and and you got a Kundalini rising up your spine and how do I do this and that and. Let me listen to a certain frequency and I'm going to activate my pineal. That's called Luciferianism. It's called over spirituality. It's a trick of the enemy. Okay. It's almost the opposite of Satanism. It's Satanism is artificial intelligence. It's not alive. Luciferianism is to get you to think that you are only spirit. Okay. If you're only spirit, you ain't got no soul. So, and that's what these beings are, the, what you call, people call reptilians and stuff. The reason they're able to, to uh, walk amongst us is because they have the ability to bend light. And guess what? This eclipse got something to do with the veil, another piece of the veil being removed and their abilities they're losing their their tech, technological abilities that are built into them okay they have the ability to bend light that's why sometimes you see you know the eye changes to a slit and stuff cuz for a split second they lost the ability to bend light and you saw what was really the, the true a piece of the true them like the girl on the plane that flipped out and seen somebody back there you know for whatever reason uh, whatever that being was, whether it was a psyop or if it was real, lost the ability for a split second to bend the light. That's what they do. They bend light. How do they do that? Through crystal, crystal technology. And you and I have that technology. We've just forgotten how to use it. We have the real technology. Actually, they got the artificial. We got the, the organic. We got the source code. The Christos. So we have the ability to do that and way more. That's why Christ said you're going to do greater things. When Wait until you really get people. Man, look. Everybody talking about the 144,000. You will know when the 144,000 is here fully activated. These people and these beings, ain't they don't stand a chance uh, a, a cold day in hell. They don't even got a chance against us. And that's just a fact. So, so basically, um, once, once the monad, which is just a word for, you know, oneness, was turned to the duad, um, Adam was basically, he was put into a state of discord and delusion. And that's what most, that's what we're in. That's what our, our fathers, 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 our, our ancestors have been in a state of discord and delusion, thinking that this is the only world and this is it. And you die and that's it. You go wherever into the dirt or you go nowhere. You just go to sleep or, you, or, or like nobody knows nothing. Nobody even knows who they are or what they are. That's this is when it happened, and this creature was that was formed was exiled from its celestial home. So the twofold man was driven from paradise, um, belonging to the undivided creation 
and cherubim and a flaming sword were placed on guard at the gates of the causal world. So consequently, only after the reestablishment of unity within himself or herself can man and woman regain their primal spiritual state. That is the whole teaching of Christ especially in the book of Thomas. That's why they took it out, because that was his main focus. So it's about oneness. It's about you. That's why. And it also goes with the story of, you know, on the, 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 hill, of Golgotha, the hill of Golgotha, the place of the skull, thief on the right. You have to enter through the right brain. The left brain is logic. That's like basically the reptilian computer. That's the art. The left brain is how the artificial, basically the what we call Satan. That's how Satan enters. That's where Satan works. Logic, numbers, mathematics. Uh, you know, numerology, like 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 statistics and things, and like uh, you, you know things like that. That's that's like the that's the closest thing inside of us to artificial technology. And that's the thief on the left. But the thief on the right is intuition. It's 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 not everyone gets it mixed up with with just only feminine. Like it's only like 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 it's a, connected to only women. That's false. It's the right brain is, is is a lot more than just like uh you know some overly feminine thing. You're looking at it from a carnal point of view if you look at it like that. Um but according to the the Isserine, and I'll spell that out for you because that's the name of the secret doctrine of Israel. It's called the Isserim. I S A. R I M. That's the secret doctrine of Israel. Okay, there were four atoms. This was also taught in the mystery schools in ancient Kemet. Um, at this time, it wasn't called Kemet, it was called Tamara. Okay, that's why you have atom, at atom, at atom, atom. They had all they had different atoms. Okay, so according to the Isserim or the secret doctrine of Israel, there were four atoms, each one dwelling in one of the four worlds or domes. Each world had a dome over top of it. The first or the heavenly atom dwelt alone, and the sphere is called the. I always have a problem saying it. it's it's the as the ats. That's a Luthic sphere. And within his nature existed all spiritual and material potential at potentialities, meaning basically was God in his own world. That was the original plan. At the first Adam had all potential with spiritual and material things. What does that sound like? That sounds like the story of the Demiurge. Okay? This is the hijack. This is the real story. You're getting the heavy story, not just the little poetry story that we've gotten from this King James Version. Uh, You know, man fell, the, the fall of man, and now the only forgiveness is shedding of blood. Well, you've been lied to. So that was the first sphere where uh, this atom had all spiritual and material potentialities. The second atom resided in the sphere of Bria or Bria, B R I A H. Like the first atom, this being was androgynous. But the tenth division of his body, which is his heel, and in the the Kabbalists call it Malkuth. It was the tenth division of his body, 
the second Adam's body. It was his heel or Malchus. Now, this corresponds to the prophecy that shall bruise the serpent's head. Well, that's a whole nother teaching. I, that, that would take me on a whole nother journey if I broke that down. So the third Adam, likewise, still androgynous, was clothed in a body of light and abode in the sphere of Yetzirah. Okay. Y E T Z I R A H. Yetzirah. Okay. Kind of like, and, and now we're getting close to the Sephiroth. The Sephiroth. Now, the fourth Adam was merely the third Adam after the fall into the sphere of Asiah. A S S I A H. At which time the spiritual man took upon himself the animal shell of coat of skins. Now, y'all, you know, in the King James Version or any Bible you ever read, you read that he was given a coat of skins. Now, in other books that are you know, extra biblical secret books. It is said that these coats of skins was handed down by Seth and Seth through through you know through the through that bloodline and made it to Noah. And this is the reason that Noah uh kicked I believe it was, it was Ham, correct, Brother BC? It was Ham that he 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 kicked he kicked out, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the story goes that Ham, the these were some kind of special coats of skin that had some kind of powers or something, and Noah had them. So when they say Noah revealed himself, they're saying that he he, he took off his his uh. His coat of skins the, that the, that was passed down from the fourth Adam, okay, and Ham stole them, and that was what that whole beef beef was. So, the fourth Adam was the first Adam that actually had skin, and it was skin of an animal. So basically, we fell so far that we got animal skin on right now, y'all. We the third Adam had a light body. Had a, and that was the third Adam. So just imagine what the first Adam, the power was. It was here to do what you were told, what you're told that the demiurge did. Okay, that's why the Christ had to come. It's not what they told you that he had to come and do this and do that. Yeah, he had to pay for sins. He had to pay for Adam keep falling and falling and falling. Uh, and getting divided. That's why he keeps telling you, especially in apocryph apocrypha text, uh, you know, that's not in your canonized text, you're not going to reach the kingdom of heaven until the two become one again. He's trying to tell you. He, and even in the book of time, he said, when your clothes hit the floor and there's no shame, he's not talking about your clothes. He's talking about when we ain't even got no skin. So, brothers and sisters, we have a little ways to go. You you know, like I said earlier, it's not about works, but you got work to do spiritually, internally. Okay? Stop looking outward. Stop talking to something outside of you. Stop, stop doing rituals and things and thinking you got to do this and do that. Stop, stop looking up. You know, a lot, some of y'all diving into witchcraft and stuff now. And and look, and not all witchcraft started bad. Not all voodoo started evil. Not all witchcraft. It started with nature. But then it became idolatry because it became the worship of nature. And guess what? We're not in the real world. I've broken that down to you here tonight. That these beings separated us. 
people think we're in now now people got whole websites with two hundred thousand followers thinking we're in some simulation and are buying into that more than buying into christ you rather believe a man that's read a uh, two thousand books and he and now he's and he comes out of nowhere and tells you oh we're living in a simulation uh you know and 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 and, and there's uh anki is Enoch and that's who built the pyramid and the pyramid was was built to break the matrix and to f Uh oh, I think we lost them. I'm gonna wait a few minutes. Uh probably his battery. That's what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it and then I'm gonna call him and we're gonna do the next message. 